Hello friends and welcome to Zionville. Let's take this step by step. Let's bow for a word of prayer as we begin. Our great God and our Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee for this opportunity once again to pray and to study. Please be with me as I talk and be with those who are watching whenever they are, that we might learn the truth and glorify Thee. And we will thank Thee in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's take this step by step. What is the simple biblical understanding of God? I'm going to make this incredibly easy to understand because it is when you choose to believe just what the Bible says and go no farther. I don't mean that there isn't a whole lot that we cannot know because there is, but what God has revealed is not among those things. The Bible tells us this, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. As you can see, there are secret things that he has not revealed. We are not to speculate about them. But there are things he has revealed which belong to us and to our children. These are ours to discuss and to delineate as sound doctrine. And no speculation is necessary, for these things are revealed truth. They are correct right out of the gate. Remember this, and don't let anyone tell you that the truth about God is some kind of a mystery that you just cannot know. It is not. He has told us plenty, everything we need for our understanding and for our salvation, but nothing more. And yes, it is important. Many people just brush the subject off saying it doesn't matter. But if so, then what do we do with these scriptures? I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verses 2 and 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Revelation 14, 6 and 7. These passages, and so many others, put the lie to those who think this subject is unimportant or some kind of devilish sidetrack we shouldn't waste time on. Oh no. From the first two passages, Exodus 20 and John 17, the first commandment makes it obviously important to know who the Lord thy God is, as no other God or gods are allowed. Next, Jesus said in John 17, 3, that the matter is the essence of eternal life, to know the one true God and his Son, as the Jews were appraised of way back in Proverbs 30, verse 4, which parallels the words of Jesus exactly. Know them, and you have eternal life. Know some other God or gods, and you do not have eternal life. It's that simple, as Christ stated in his prayer to his Father and ours in heaven the night before he died on Calvary's cross for our sins, John 17, 3. And finally, at the end of time, people must know this one also, as the first angel's message makes abundantly clear. And the hour of his judgment is here, right now, very important, wouldn't you say? So who is this one true God? He is the one we call God the Father. He is also called the Most High God and other similar appellations in Scripture. But wait a minute. Isn't Jesus Christ God also? In nature, yes, but not in personality, as he is a separate being from his father, just as human sons are separate from their fathers while having the same human nature. Jesus has the same full divine nature which he inherited from his father, Hebrews 1 verses 1 to 9, when he was begotten in eternity past before anything was created by them, Proverbs 8, to 26. This is what the Bible says. 
Are you going to listen to its inspired testimony, or will you persist in hearing the naysaying of unsanctified, fallible human beings? Remember, Jesus' definition of eternal life, which disallows the Trinity and a lot of other things as well. Here are just a few passages on God the Father. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1.1, and continuing through the entire chapter with the Son of God brought in in verse 26. At this point, I need to tell you two things. First, the plural word forms used here and elsewhere of this being do not indicate a three-in-one trinity God, but rather the majesty and greatness of this singular being. It is like the royal we in English. It's all about majesty. Ask any Jew who knows Hebrew. I believe Jewish linguists know their own language far better than Gentile theologians trying to prop up Catholic error from the 4th century. And second, when you see the word God in your English Bibles, it refers to this God of Genesis, the Father, unless there is a direct statement to the contrary or the context demands it. As an example of this, we have already mentioned Hebrews 1, where Jesus is properly called God in verse 8, because he is the Son of God and has the same divine nature as his Father. Remember this as you read the scriptures from now on, and the Bible will come alive to you in new ways, and your understanding of it will greatly increase. Always make the proper distinction between the Father and the Son, including when you pray. The conflation of the two of them in public prayer is as awful as it is confusing. But when the suppliant believes in a fused God, the Trinity, what else can you expect? Please, heed Daniel the prophet's warning about this strange God, Daniel 11, 37 to 39. Have nothing to do with it. Now here's another verse about our Heavenly Father. Listen to this. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God, Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2. This clearly refers to the Father alone. It does not refer to Christ, and it does not refer to their Holy Spirit, nor does it refer to the false, amalgamated Father, Son, Holy Ghost God of the Catholic Protestant Trinity. And here's one more. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 and 5. This, the cornerstone of the faith of Israel, which is repeated by Jesus in Mark 12, 29 to 30, is talking about God the Father in all his majesty and greatness and none other. The Father is Jesus God, John 20, 17, and needs to be ours too. But Satan's Trinitarian teaching, and his tritheistic teaching too, by the way, has eclipsed him. The devil substitutes an amalgamated abomination, the Trinity, for our Heavenly Father. It is time to rectify that 500 years after the Protestant Reformation began, especially among Seventh-day Adventists, who had it right in the beginning of the movement. They don't have it right today. Moving on from the Father, what about Jesus Christ, the Son of God? We have already mentioned how he was begotten of the Father before all creation, thus being a real son, not a metaphor, as so many so-called theologians teach today. As a result, pastors teach this to their flocks who are completely unaware of the error. They don't know it. I want you to know that the Son of God died for me, not a co-equal, co-eternal person playing a role. A metaphor did not die for me, not, nor for you. Be sure you understand this, first of all. Then know this. Jesus had an origin, a beginning, which in no way detracts from his full deity, as we have also seen. He was begotten, not made or created, begotten. The word is monogenes which is a compound word literally meaning only generated or only born. Yes, Jesus is unique as the only Son ever generated out of the person of the Father, John 16, 27, and 30. There is none other, nor will there ever be. And the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, also upholds this truth. 
along with many other passages. Co-eternal? No. To the law and to the testimony. And that is the testimony of the scriptures throughout. Additionally, it must be understood that our Savior, way back when he was called Michael, he who was like God, was in loving submission to God his Father. This does not make him a lesser God as Catholics and Protestants fear and Jehovah's Witnesses teach, but rather a dutifully obedient son, a wonderful example for human beings in all things. One who is in submission is not co-equal in that respect. So, the Catholic doctrines of the 4th century made a mountain out of a molehill here, which became a huge entrenched false doctrine. Believe the word of God instead. And finally, what of the Holy Spirit? It really should be written as Holy Spirit with a small h, since this is not the title of a being separate from the Father and the Son as most think. No, the Spirit is never called God the Holy Spirit. A Catholic 4th century term like God the Son also never found in the Bible. But only and always the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Lord, etc. Because that is exactly what it is. And the Spirit is personal because it is the Father and the Son in their omnipresence. They come to men and women in spirit, not in a physical manifestation, nor by somebody else. They themselves both indwell truly born-again believers, as Jesus makes plain in John 14, 23. There is not a third God being, and that is the truth. Tritheists need to understand this too, as well as the truth of Christ's origin. The three persons mentioned in Matthew 28, 19 and 1 John 5, 7 are God the Father, Jesus the Son of God, and the Spirit of Christ. They are not the three-in-one Roman Catholic Trinity, which is Trinitarianism, nor a family or committee of three gods, tritheism. The Bible says there are only two divine beings who have the ability to be spiritually omnipresent, thus constituting the third person. This is called the heavenly trio in the Spirit of Prophecy writings, a term that Ellen White, by the direction of Christ in his spirit form, coined. No trinity, no three-in-one monstrosity like you see here. Like it or not, that's the way it is. I invite you to truly study and humbly ask the Lord for help. To that end, I hope you will all open your Bibles and study for yourselves rather than just believing what you've heard all your life. Believing traditional ideas is what is going to get most professing Christians lost. Start with the scriptures here and presented and go on from there. If you have questions, please get in touch. I'll help you understand if I can. And above all, seek the Father's help. I know he can help you since I have experienced it after fighting this for years. None can afford to be loosey-goosey with this. The judgment is almost over. Jesus is coming soon. Maranatha.